anchors up, sails at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Good night, Jared. Doing all right. How are you? You know, I'm doing better than the Ohio State basketball team. God, they need to shoot so much better. It, it, it's only half time. Well, just starting the second half, and they are shooting 31%. Wolf. The, the competition's good? Uh, we're just we're just going to move on to uh, know your enemy, Jared. We're going to talk football here. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. We'll talk football. We'll talk football. Yeah. Know your enemy, Maryland Terrapins. We're going to talk about the Turtles again, Jared. Our favorite time of the year. Our favorite time of the year. We have we have two turtle based. I mean, we have a turtle based tradition and a turtle based team. So it just, I don't. I don't know what's going on in that picture, Kabuto. Um, no clue. Uh, th- that I like the the turtle slapping the other turtle. That's that is excellent. That is an excellent gif. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that back on the screen for a second. Look at that! Just a turtle slapping another turtle. What else could you want? <laughs> how, about, how about how about some Buckeyes slapping some turtles this weekend? Buckeyes slapping turtles. Yeah. Maryland coming into this game six and four, three and four in the Big Ten, losing their last two games to Penn State 30 to nothing, and then Wisconsin 23 to 10. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, four losses on the year. Um, is what it is. This Purdue team, or Purdue, they just read that they lost to Purdue. This Maryland team, um, it's not, it's not terrible. It's not a terrible team. Um, deep diving into the statistics, um, it is good for Maryland. Uh, maybe, maybe. Or it's this is just a Maryland team might be the better way of saying it. Like this is this is Maryland. Uh, one thing I figured out, sort of deep diving into the statistics, because I sort of saw it on Twitter and elsewhere all week, was like, oh, this Maryland passing defense is garbage. This Maryland, uh, oh my god, the Maryland pass defense is garbage. It's terrible. It's not and, great, but <laughs> yeah, uh, you look and it's like number sixty eight in the country. Ooh. Ooh. That but was close. that was close. It was it was close. But if you look, opponents yard per pass, they're 18th in the country. 18th in the country. All that r- really means is that teams are passing on them a ton. In fact, uh, uh opponents attempted passes per game, they are 116th in the country. It's kind of like our situation last week with the Indiana run defense. Yeah, and we saw what Ohio State did to them. So I yeah, yeah, I'm just, a, a full, listen, full on passing attack in this game, right? Right. Um, I'm gonna just I'll say I'll say it like this: uh, they're not nearly as bad as that 68 makes them look from a pass defense perspective, but they probably also aren't as good as 18. If we're being honest, if we're being honest, they're probably also not as good as 18. Truth. Uh, probably they're, falling they're, somewhere in the middle there. Yeah, they're they're a middle of the road type of team. They're not terrible, but they're not great. They're just in the middle there. I mean, you look at Jared already listed a lot of the statistics there, but you look at anything else in here: points per game, letting up points, offense, defense, conversions, whatever. They're near that somewhere between forty, between forty and seventy range there. So they're kind of just in the middle there yeah um yeah the uh one of the other things that sticks out to me as kyle points out the 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 stats feel very balanced they feel like very balanced stats but they're not just balanced as far as like being in the middle they're also pretty balanced like pass or uh offense to defense for example uh yards per rush they are ranked offensively 54th in the country Defensively, 55th in the country. Um, Passing yards per game, 
fiftieth on offense, sixty eighth on defense. Uh, turnover statistics. Uh, well, I guess that one's just a plus minus, so it's always going to look like that. Um, but uh, penalties, penalties. Uh, this is this is where they kind of fall apart. This is where they kind of fall apart. This is where sort of that middle of the road thing falls off. Uh, they are 110th in the country number of penalties and penalty yards per game 124th. That's that's nearing dead last. Yeah, that is not good. Not good, Jared. So um, Maryland, if they if if, if we're going to play the what does Maryland have to do game like if Maryland wants to pull the upset, what do they have to do? And they have to play clean football. And they need they they can't be, um, they can't have a penalty at 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 the rate of a hundred and tenth in the country. As that's not going to work. Will they actually call holding against them? Well, Kabuto, I added the word actually to your question. If that tells you anything about where my mind was, <laughs> for the first what, 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 time of the year for our D line, uh, it's not the. It wouldn't be the first, but it, it definitely wouldn't be uh, accurate. It, it wouldn't be anywhere near uh, making it up. That's for sure. Well, what does Maryland have going for them, Jared? What does baby Maryland? Tua. Baby, baby Tua. Baby Tua is their quarterback. He's he's played the past couple of weeks here, but I think that's about it. <laughs> he has he has not been the same since he came back from his injury there. Uh, not I'm pulling up the stats real quick here, but his numbers have not been that good earlier on in the season. He, he was actually pretty decent here. Um, he, he, he was, um, 66% against, uh, Michigan for over 200 yards. He threw, uh, he threw for over 300 against Sparty over 300 against Purdue but then the last two weeks here against Wisconsin and Penn State, he he put up seventy seven and seventy four yards passing. It's not great. No, uh, we'll no, just we'll not. just go ahead and say it. Like he's back, but he's not. He's not back. Like no. if you look at his season numbers, they still look kind of good. Seven point seven per attempt, nearly seventy percent completion percentage. Um, quarterback rating of 144.8. If you look at those totals, it looks like he's doing a damn good job this year. But as as Kyle pointed out, those feel a little front loaded. Uh, am I, I am saying that way too nice. I'll I'll I'll, I'll say it nice. That's a little front. It's a little front loaded. Yeah, it is. Uh, one of the things he and his uh, backup had in common, and to to a much better quarterback overall. I think we can, I feel like I could back that up statistically, but I also don't feel like I really need to. Yeah. One of the things Maybe. where they um, have comparable numbers is sacks. Um, the quarterbacks totaling a hundred and or a hundred. Wow. Uh, totaling uh, 29 sacks so far on the year. Um, and when you look at the uh, passing statistics, I believe I, yeah. Quarterback sack percentage sitting at 97%. Excuse me. God, I keep messing that up. It's a, it's at 97th place. I, I did the place and the statistic backwards both times. Yeah, in the past two games here, two has been... Uh, Words sacked. are hard. He's been sacked five times against Wisconsin and seven times against Penn State. So since yep. he's been back, he's already he's already been sacked 12 times. Yeah. Not and Not good. if you're looking for a uh, more like statistical balance, uh, 97th in the country giving up sacks, 91st in the country at creating sacks. More balance, um, but definitely some black marks on the uh, on the Maryland statistical page for sure. I see Tommy with four sacks. Um, I that that's a big number. I don't know if Austin's given us his over unders yet, but I would I would take an under on that one. 
Will Rakeem Jarrett still be sitting on the bench pissed? Uh, no. Or yes? <laughs> Which bench? <laughs> Which bench are we talking about? Yeah. All right. Uh, but speaking of Rakeem Jarrett, he is the leading wide receiver, at least statistically, on the team. Um, has the most catches by a lot. Has a fair... Uh, the when when you compare him to second place, uh, who is their tight end, about the same yardage ish. Maryland's where he sat last year, boohooing. I'm I'm aware, but he is playing now. But I was just like, you know, which I was just I was just having fun with you. Um, but yeah, they uh. Their their primary wide receiver is Jarrett. Then you can probably say pretty easily. Um, next would be their tight end. Um, then they have wide receiver Copeland, who also has got um, a fair amount of yards. And then they have wide receiver Jones, who has uh, about the same number of yards, but a little bit more catches than Copeland. Um, Copeland, going by pure statistics on this, seems to be one of their uh, like bigger play wide receivers. As far as his average goes, he has the best catching average, uh, best yardage average on the team. But really, really, if anything, like I'm not too worried about their offense. They, I, they're averaging 28 points, but they're and they're lighting up about 25 points per game here. But what you got to really worry about with Maryland here is their their duo safeties who are who are playing really, really well. And <laughs> that typically doesn't um, bode too well if your yeah. two safeties or if your two safeties are your leading tackler tacklers for the team. Yeah, that's not a great sign. It's not, it's not uh, a good sign. Yeah, Blade and Trader are there are are their uh, two leading tacklers. Um yeah, uh that's it's not it's not a, your defensive backs can't be leading your team in tackles. It's not a, it's not a good it's not a good sign. It's not um it that, that almost never is a unless you have like a real true like standout safety. And like these guys are good. Don't get me wrong. They'll get shots mm -hmm. at the NFL. Don't get me wrong. But you don't you don't want defensive backs being you don't want defensive backs being your top two. Well, nope. yeah, they're top two tackle getters. Um, Blade does also have uh, a couple interceptions on the year, a couple forced fumbles on the year. Um, so it's not it's not like it's not like he's just back there catching all the time. He is. Unless you're talking about interceptions, in which case he does have two of those. Um, and then, you know, Trader also has has solid numbers to back up uh, his tackles as well. Who who's the guest picker? Uh, that is Gangland. We'll see him up here pretty soon. All right. Um, honestly, honestly. Yeah, we talk, we talk about the two safeties, uh, Braden and Trader. Uh, their linebackers aren't too bad as well. Hey, look, we got another McCullough to talk about, Jared. <laughs> yep. <laughs> got another McCullough. Um, I'm in McCullough is um, with 43 tackles for the year. And uh, Deshaun um, Barham, also pretty much similar stats as uh, McCullough as well. 42 tackles, four and a half tackles for loss and three sacks for the year. And their defensive end, uh, Greg uh, China Rose, um, Definitely a can be a uh, a pretty stout defensive end to get the quarterback here, who has four sacks for the year uh, so far. But on it, it's it's really the safeties that Ohio State really has to watch out for. And if it's really just the safeties on defense, it's it's just pitch and catch type of game for uh, CJ and uh, the wide receivers. They're they're launching a conspiracy theory down in the chat that you're a secret Maryland fan for some reason. I don't know why. You, you I, I don't did don't I don't did try, nothing wrong. Don't don't try and, don't try and get in their heads. Don't try and yeah. get in their heads. It's 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 a no win situation for you. ACC country. They've been in the Big Ten for how many years now? Shh. All right. All right. Uh, anything else you want to talk about before we get into our picks here, Jared? Um, 
I I don't know. It's it's this team is so exceedingly average. <laughs> it's it's a little tough. Um it's 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 a little tough to find stuff to talk about. Um teams have not tried to run the ball against them much this year, and I'm not a hundred percent sure why, because like they're still they're letting up like four yards a carry. You know, they're like right once again, like right in the middle of the country. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I I don't know. Like it's it's just like I said, it's an exceedingly average team. And despite the fact that teams aren't don't rush against them too often. Um I don't know. I don't know. I, I think in many ways, if we look at what's happening if sort of parsing down through the statistics and all that. Um, it's just, like I said, an exceedingly average team, except in a couple places where they seem to be pretty weak. They don't do anything exceptionally well. Um, they have a couple of weaknesses. They're mostly just very average. Um, if, if, Tunga Viola, Tunga, I can never say his name. I got myself, I was <laughs> gearing myself up for it. Um, if he, <laughs> uh, Tua, Tua, well, baby Tua, t- Jared. Yeah, baby Tua. Um, <laughs> if, if he, uh, if he sort of finds his September form and comes back, Tunga via Ola, thank you, Zach. That is very appreciated of you. Um, so yeah, like I said, if if he can sort of find a September form and come back, and you know, really lead the offense and excel at quarterbacking, um, then again, like, what does Maryland have to do to have a chance? A return of form for for a tug of viola. I see. I always try and like take a syllable out. Tug of viola. I always try and like take a syllable out for some reason. That's my biggest issue. All right. So Ohio State Maryland here, Jared. Ohio State is a twenty seven and a half point favorite coming into this game. Before we do the uh, spread picture, we are going to pick our players to watch. So we'll start with Ohio State. Who is your Ohio State player to watch for this game? Um, Ohio State player to watch. I, I want I want one of the wide receivers who aren't Marvin Harrison Jr. to step up in this game. This kind of feels like it's a it's a good opportunity um, for Mecca Abuka. To sort of return to form. Uh, I, so I think that's where I'm looking. I think I'm going to look at Mecca Abuka. Um, I, I think that they're Maryland's probably going to try their best to put like they're, they have, they have some talented guys in the secondary to, to take away Marvin Harrison jr. It should leave some openings for the other guys. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to put that pressure on a Mecca Abuka. All right. And I'm going to go with, uh, Cade Stover. I think Cade Stover is your player to watch here because it is Jared, those same year. lines. It is the year of the tight end here. Uh, it absolutely I mentioned is. before. Mentioned before. I think Ohio State's going to find openings. Going to find a lot of open space um, to keep it away from those safeties and just going to pitch and catch to your tight ends. To maybe we get Fleming involved. Maybe Fleming starts to turn things around and. Um, um, not have as many drop passes and yeah, essentially like what you said, Jared, Any, anybody, but like to see everybody, but um, Marvin Harrison jr. Start to um, get the ball a little bit more. And like, that's, that's not on Marvin Harrison jr. Or CJ Stroud. That's on the other pass receivers. Yeah. All uh, right. And, Enemy player to watch. Well, gang, gang, Gangland gave you an Ohio State player. Who do you who do you have? No, it's it's in the it's oh, in the notes. You didn't. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Um, Ohio State player 
to watch out for. Uh, CJ Stroud should have a massive performance in our last tune-up game before the game. Expect a 300-plus yard performance and at least four touchdowns for him. Fleming will come so close to a touchdown, but it'll be cleaned up by Mitch Rossi for a one to two yard TD catch. Uh, look for Trey to pop a few big runs and then get the leash put on him to save him for next week. Uh, Dallin Hayden might rush for 120 out of load management to sake for the veterans. See, I thought that was a player. It turned out to be several players, but you know, it's his week. We'll let him have it. All right. All right. Enemy player to watch Jared. Uh, I'll go first. I'll go with the, uh, the tight end. I think, uh, I think overall, I've been very impressed with Ohio State and really containing uh, a lot of the tight ends that usually get thrown at them. Uh, Look at the Iowa game, look at the Notre Dame game. I think overall, Ohio State's done a pretty good job here. And I'm I'm going to stick with the tight end again here, uh, uh, Corey. Uh, Corey... um, trying to figure out how to pronounce his last name jared <laughs> <laughs> are you looking at me you don't want to say, i've already yeah, failed you, i've already failed once spectacularly it's your I'm, turn I'm just, I'm just gonna say Corey. i'm not gonna i'm not gonna um humiliate myself so i'm gonna say Corey. <laughs> kyle says austin um at least i tried I, guys at least i tried as, as Jared mentioned before, he's second on the team in receptions on um, on yardage as as well. Yeah, I, I think I think if 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 Maryland's going to get anything going in the passing game, um, Corey's going to have to um, get involved here. Uh, I think it's I'm, I'm going to put it all on to Leah. Um, again, I think the the difference between Maryland having a chance in this game and not having a a chance in this game is um is is just you know which which Talia shows up yeah all right and uh let's see here guest picker here has i really expect JT and Lathan to have big games this week and show just how far we have come as a team on that side of the ball in the years to come look out for some sunny Styles appearance this weekend also because I think he could have some significant snaps next weekend against the against the best run offense we will see all year. I want to see four plus sacks and less than less than 250 yards given up by our starters. I would love nothing more than to see a pick six or two by our freshman, but I can accept another JT one if that is what's provided. There you go. Um, all right. It's, it's come down to this. It's come down to this, Kyle. Um, the spread pick, uh, number sitting at, or wait a minute, we, we didn't do matchups yet. Did we? Uh, no, we didn't do matchups. I have, I have wide, re- I have a hostage wide receivers versus Maryland safeties. Surprise, surprise. Yeah, I, 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 I can see that. Um, I, I can't, I can't even kind of disagree with that. Kyle, I think I said it last week. And they played better, but not great. And I think I said I was going to keep doing this until we've seen it change. I have Ohio State's interior offensive line against the Maryland defensive tackles. I will keep saying this until I see Ohio State start start getting some short yardage plays. All right. Rakeem Jarrett versus Denzel Burke, because that's fun that that, you know, that's probably you know it's a it's a real strength on strength by the way just Mm -hmm. we haven't we haven't talked about denzel burke in a while which is great like that's exactly what you want like he had a bit of a had a bit of a uh tough start to the season um and has properly the way you want the cornerback to do sort of disappeared a bit as of late All right. Uh, as Jared is about to say here, the, the spread for this game is 27 and a half points and the over under 63 points. You want to go first, Jared? Cause I think, I think, I think the, um, I think the chat loves you more than, than me when it comes to the Ohio state picks here. So I'll, I'll let you go first. Really? Is that what yeah. you think? 
Mm -hmm. I know. Is, no, it's what I know. Because is that I, what I'm you getting, think? They I they are all. I get. I get pressed every week about about mm, Co Co's go, not going to pick Ohio State this week. Hmm. Hmm. What a surprise. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll let you go first, Jared. Okay. Kyle's in his feelings right now. So I guess I guess I got to do this. Um, I have Ohio State to win. I have Ohio State to cover. Kyle, would you say the over under was? 63. I will take the over. Um, I have Ohio State winning 55 to 14. I have very similar score, Jared, but I have Ohio State 63. Oh. Uh-huh. To 14. Hold on. Chat. I have Ohio State winning 54 to 14. 54 to 14 is not CSI a nice, card. Jared. 54 to 14 is not a nice. I'm sorry, what? 54 to 14 is not a nice. You don't think so? Nah, hey, hey, hey guys, I, I think, I think Jared, Jared's having a, um, a math fart here. Am I? <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm just, I'm staring at it and it is not making sense to me. No, I said 55 to 14. Kyle, look at the notes. Yep. What you said in the notes and what you said is not the same. Oh, did I, did I, okay, so I didn't do, hold on, hold on, hold on. I didn't do bad math. I did bad talk. Is that, is that in my defense? Probably not. No, no. But it's important that everyone knows I did bad talk, not bad math. I, I want everyone to know that. Kyle can vouch for me what the, what it says in the notes. It does say 55 to 14. It does. But what you said was not. Uh, I'm, anyway. I can't be responsible for what I say. <laughs> and, I, and I, for those that didn't hear, I, I have Ohio State scoring more 63 to 14. Because I, th I think Ohio State is just that, that go score is not here. very nice, Kyle. I know it's not, but it's OK. It's definitely, definitely uh, over. It's definitely the over. Right. Smash that over. Um, what is uh, Gangland's prediction? Right. If you need to tag me, grab, you, grab, you, there's a lot here. If you need to tag grab, me grab out, tag, some, tag, or Jared, you need to tag Jared, me in, tag me in. Jared, Jared, Jared. Popcorn. Popcorn here. Popcorn. Yep. All right. Uh, Ohio State, Maryland. Uh, Baby Two is just okay. He really isn't that guy like he was made out to be. But he has some decent weapons on the outside. Their offensive line is the definition of a sieve. Sieve? I'm not sieve? sure what you mean by that. Hmm? Sieve. What? A sieve. sieve. Thank you. Sieve. Think like a, we'll think like like a colander. Ah. And will likely get him killed by halftime. Early third quarter at the, at the latest. For those who remember the Virginia Tech quarterback who was saying at halftime he could ball out in the second half in 2015... Think of it like that because he I will be taking about shots. That. I don't anticipate anything insanely exotic from uh, Timothy Knowles, but I look forward to seeing uh, what we do against one of the better passing offenses we will see all year. Just, just, just once again, because I feel like we're on a terrible track record so far this episode. That is what is written there. It does say him it's an intention. No. I think it's an intentional nickname because he is him. Coach Knowles is him. I think is yes. what he's going for there. Is it heavy cover zero blitz? Uh, do we run a lot of cover three or four? Uh, only Timothy Knowles. But I look forward to breaking it down after the game. I'm going to slap you. <laughs> I truly expect our offense to have a huge day, but we need to see more from our other weapons out 
on the outside away from Marv. Hmm. I think we said that. Uh, he is a certified stud, but we won't see single coverage the rest of the, his career from here on out. <laughs> yeah. I need to see Emeka and, and Julian show the production we saw from them early this year to free up the offense. Having Henderson back should be great for the running game. Uh, as even though Mayan had a field day last weekend, he left so many extra yards on the field just because he didn't have the same burst as Trey. I'm also praying to whatever God exists. We see some JSN this weekend. Uh, I don't, I don't anticipate it, but uh, as, as, as that will free up the past game even further. What is also huge is include. What is also huge to include is how CJ Stroud has unleashed the athlete within him and is fighting for yards and showing that competitive spirit now. Now, okay, deep breath. Uh, he <laughs> does uh, gangland, my man. Um, you, you get, you said Buckeyes by 45. So you let us know that Ohio State wins and that they cover. But I don't see a final score prediction here. You got to give me a final score here. Got to give me a final score. I mean, I I, I like to think I, I know what it is. <laughs> You'll know it'll be nice. <laughs> uh, you're going to make Jared do math. Come on. No, I, I can do math. I just don't talk. I do math, not talk. Make Jared do math. It's It's literally just shift 10 points from Ohio state to Maryland. And it's my score. It's not hard math. No, wait a minute. That would be if Ohio state scored 45. That's not Ohio state by 45. Okay. Now you're making me do math. Now you're making me do math. Now I don't. It's, it's, it's nice. Regardless. It's nice. All right. Whatever it is. Oh, hold on. Gangland six says 69 to 24. There you go. So my math actually was accidentally correct. All right, we'll, we'll answer some Vindicated. more. Um, all right, we're going to answer some more, um, some more questions here from Austin's over-unders. You know what time it is. All right, he has here over-unders. Catches by Ohio State players not named Marvin Harrison Jr. over under 17 and a half under. That's that want, that I'll, feels I'll, like a big number, Austin. I'm always quick to tell you when you when your number's good. It's not. It feels very big. That's what she said. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm going under. I I'm, I'm gonna going go under. under as well. I I, I know, by the way, I know Austin always has good logic. Three weeks ago it was 16. What was it last week and the week before? Like it's concentrated through the season. I think they'll try to get them more involved. I hope so. Week before was Northwestern. Okay, that's fair. That's we can wash that one. All right. Uh, baby to a completion percentage. Week before over was under, like 12. Over under at 57.49%. I'm going to go under here. He, he hasn't. He just isn't the same since he's um, been hurt. And I don't see anything that shows that he'll improve that. So I'm going to go under. Yeah, I feel like under is the good call here again, because and. What, what's uh, his competition percentage of the season is like 65, though. Yeah, but oh, and Austin, I think you joined a little bit late. Um, they have uh, Kyle was already sort of talking about like. Yeah, he, he was last two two uh, pre injury and post injury and. How it's. Um, been a different situation since he came back. So I'm yeah, what is he? um he is he is 46% since coming back from injury. So I'm gonna go under. Yeah, I'm gonna go under. Ohio State touchdown, rushing touchdowns for the game at two and a half. I'm gonna go over. It's it's th these are hard because you just never know where the touchdowns are going to come from. But yeah, I'll go over. I go over. Um, yeah, Austin, I would have gone under if you said three and a half. 
Austin. Yeah, I we're agree. Have have, Austin, we're gonna we're we're we're, we're going to have to have a talk here. He 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 has a name here. I'm just going to say uh, Tommy Pickles slash Chambers tackles at 17 and a half. Um, I'm going to go over, but I'm a little hesitant because I don't know how many completed passes or runs there actually are going to be in this game. And then once you start dividing those up across the entire team, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, I agree. I'm going to go under as well. They're just going to they're going to go pass happy here and by the time the game's out of hand, you're going to start seeing second stringers in, so I'm going to go under with this one. Yeah, especially with the you know, game before Michigan. I think they'll look for any excuse they can to Yep. To pull All right. Players. And JT impact plays, a tackle for loss, sack, interception, forced fumble, uh fumble recovery. At one and a half. Okay, so we go include sack. See, the TFL really push. makes. <laughs> yeah, push. I mean, that's possible. <laughs> it is. It is. Do, do you want to amend that to like 1.49 or 1.51, Austin? 1.51. <laughs> okay, 1.51. Um, I'm going to go over and I'm going to go over because of the TFL inclusion here. Everything else, it just almost yeah. feels like it has to have the perfect storm of of stuff happen um, to because I do think Ohio State gets a fair amount of sacks this game. Um, because as we've stated, Maryland has not done a good job protecting their quarterbacks this year. Um, Especially recently. Yeah including tfls yeah i said that i said because you included tfls i'll go over that's what i said yeah. i'll go over as well all right and he has here rakeem Jarrett catches at five and a half i'll go over with this one that they're gonna they're gonna have to get him and um their tight end involved uh, a lot and if they get involved a lot and each get a bunch of catches uh, they means that they're they're moving the ball down the field so i'm, I'm gonna say over for Rakeem just because they they got to go to somebody. I I have a hard time seeing it. That maybe though, because Ohio State has that tendency to let like one wide receiver on the other team catch the ball a lot, but they also might make sure that yep. person's not Rakeem Jarrett. Mm -hmm. All right, and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go under. All right, and the last one, Mirko punts down inside the 20 um, with no touchbacks at one and a half. I'm going to say under just because of the sheer amount of points that I'm predicting in this game. So I'm going to go under. I'm going to go under as well. I think if I think if Ryan Day is close enough that, a you know, an inside the 20 is almost expected, then he's probably not going to punt. Um, unless it's late in the game, in which case, like there's always that late in the game caveat. Austin's still talking about the JT over under, even with tackles for loss, JT only averages less than one impact play per game. Yes, but I would note once again that more of those have come later in the season. I think the early part of the season probably weighs that statistic down. Uh, furthermore, Maryland has given up a ton of sacks this year a ton of sacks this year. So it just increases the, the likelihood that we hit, you know, you only need two plays. You only need two plays. What, what, what is Maryland doing here? I mean, I, I, I know, I know who the company is, but you, you see, you see it up front here. I don't know what and, you're talking about. And being, being a, a collegiate stadium here, their stadium name is SECU Stadium. You're, <laughs> you're stretching there, Kyle. You're stretching there, Kyle. Uh, I wanted you to play long, Jared. Oh, Jeez. well, I'm sorry. Jeez, Jared. Do you have any more questions, Kyle? We're, we're in all the fun here. Uh, do you have one question here, and I have not actually looked this up yet. Yeah. But uh, 
Buckeye Matt asks, uh, how many recruits will be at the game? I, a, a lot. I don't know. Yeah. All, I don't have a, all I don't have a number for that. I don't all, have a number for all that. The, all the recruits, Jared. <laughs> no, I mean, not all of them, but yeah. About all. Well, you can, they you only pay for the, the university can only pay for one trip. That's the official. If you don't know, if there anyone, you maybe you don't know recruiting. The difference between an official visit and an unofficial visit is that the team pays for the official visit. So like, I bet like all the Ohio kids will probably be there. Although again, with it being, I eh, bet it's Saturday, Thanksgiving's Thursday. It's probably, it'll probably be fine. But again, for any of the kids who have to travel a decent distance, maybe traveling on Thanksgiving weekends, maybe a bit tough. Uh, it hasn't really hurt them in the past though. If we're being honest, um, I, you can basically guarantee that all the local guys will be there. Yeah, uh, you can guarantee that. And I'm sure they try to get whoever else in there as possible because the shoe is never louder. I don't care if it's a Newton kickoff. It doesn't matter in this case. All right. That's all. That is all the questions we have here. And that is our know your enemy episode. You got anything else, Jared? Um. Yeah. Mark Fletcher apparently just decommitted from Ohio State. Oh, yeah, just saw Liter that. literally in our reality one minute ago. So that's a thing. Um, So uh, he probably won't be at the game. So yeah. that's yeah, Look, looks like he's been flirting. Yeah, he's, he he's has been, been flirting around schools um, with like Florida and Miami. So I think he's going to he's going to stay home. Yep. Um. Yeah, you never you never really have a commitment from a Florida kid. <laughs> the further south you go, the more true that is. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, Ohio State's been has been um, looking at other quarterbacks, including um, some some big time ones, too, that's shown some interest. So we'll we'll save that for another time. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, he's a did you. Did you mean to say quarterback? No, running back. They're, 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 Did you say running back? What well, I thought I thought you said quarterback. I, I I'm 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 obviously not all here today, so you can just call me stupid and we can move forward. It's okay. Well, if I say quarterback, it's running back. They've been they've been in contact with some running backs here, some some really highly touted running backs. So um yeah, stay tuned. All right. Uh Tonight's uh, nope too, too early for that. Just want to uh, ask everyone to check out the sloopcast.com. There you will find links to all of our other stuff, including our Patreon page. And we, like I said uh, a couple times recently, we're trying to get those numbers up. So if we're providing you with, you know, three to four hours of entertainment every week, you may, may, maybe, maybe throw $3 a month at us. I feel like that's a pretty fair ask personally with that you'll get early access to episodes you will get uh the ability to if you want to join our discord server um join you know austin and gangland and stewart and zach and everyone else who's been down there chatting with us today and sun card um in our discord server um and again it's it's three dollars a month um the discord server by the way is free uh, there are just premium sections of it, and the ability to listen to us record is one of those premium sections. And again, like it's only three dollars a month. It's practically nothing. So just you know, like I said, if you've if you have uh, consumed a lot of this podcast through the season, it would it would be greatly appreciated. Um, Kyle, that's all I have for for plugs. Do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Uh, something I've been keeping an eye on here. Uh, Mention it. I don't know if it was last week or a couple of weeks ago, but there's a lot of talks about um, with the NFL uh, PA talking about trying to ban turfs and all that, and that a specific uh, type of turf. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know that uh, the goat Tony Gurdman mentioned about that. Yeah, that can definitely. Uh, hurt Ohio State in the recruiting front if 
this ban does get put into place with the NFL from the NFL PA. But uh, Gene Smith has come out and said, yeah, we we're, we don't have any current plans to uh, to replace their brand new turf that they that they've just installed this year. But I mean, yeah. all the player, all the all the players have really liked it. Uh, I think Henderson at one point said that the turf this year is so much better than the turf that they played on on last year. Yeah, um, and I don't, I don't know any of the the science or any of the anything behind any of this. Um, I don't either. So I, I I don't feel in any way qualified to say that it's necessary or unnecessary or anything like that. So I, I think it's, it's a thing to keep an eye on. And I think it's a thing we just sort of move past because neither of us know what the hell we're talking about. Yeah. All right. Nope. That's it, Jared. That is it. Uh, because the uh, Buckeyes are basketball is still playing here. I'll just, I'll just leave it at that and we'll, we'll end the episode here. You don't want to, give everyone a, a live update on a game that ended two days ago, or I guess maybe not two days ago, maybe just one day ago. Uh, no. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. No. You want me to? Yes. No, no, yeah. not especially. Not especially. Not especially. You sure? No, I'm leaving it up to you. <laughs> uh, well, they are, they are winning. Yay. Yeah. They Tonight's ending to... music will be brought to you oh, by a actually actually it just ended. They just ended 65 to 43 over Eastern Illinois. There you go. Uh, tonight's ending music will be brought to you by an Ohio based band called the soul monsters. You can stick around, listen to them. If you're uh, listening on the podcast version of the show, if you're watching us on YouTube, then I am providing a link down in the show notes and you can click on that link and you can uh, listen to the song as well. So, with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is, this are, this is, this is the Soul Monsters. Mm-hmm.